Lincoln. Welcome, Ben. Ben Hutton. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Friends, I have the same. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Jason Schema. Jason Schema, yeah. We're happy to have you. Uh, you can start. Thank you. Screen. Sorry, say again. You can start to share your screen. Okay, let's do that. Um, I think I want to share this one. Excuse the inception. Yes, we see your screen. Uh, Start with your slides. Okay, okay. Hey, you can hide the little toolbar. Yeah, how are we doing? Are we there? The stage is yours. We are listening to you. Super. Well, um, yeah, thank you very much for inviting me to speak at API Days. Um, I'm very excited to um, talk to you about Jason Schema Draft 2020 and a few other things you should know. Um, so hopefully you're here because you want to hear about um, JSON Schema, otherwise you're in the wrong talk. Um, JSON Schema is, is not something I do as part of my day job. Uh, we have a small amount of funding, which I'll uh, talk about later in front of the sponsors. Um, this is a very brief introduction to a few different concepts. Um, we're going to go over some key terminology and talk about what's new in terms of draft 2020 and also cover some of the changes that were made for draft 2019-09 um, which might sound old but it's still uh, kind of new and it's most definitely relevant to people looking to use open api 3.1 uh, so json schema is just a personal draft um, it doesn't have uh, full backing of the ietf um, but it lives on the ietf website the website is uh, sometimes out of date and the documentation is sometimes a little inaccurate. So I guess the real question is, is JSON schema um, something people can use today? Uh, is it ready to use in production? Um, by the look of the, the people that use it, um, I would say yes. It's baked into Visual Studio Code and there's no plugins required to start writing JSON schemas in Visual Studio Code. Um, it's used for configuration files as well for validation. Um, it's used by Webpack to validate package files. It's used by MongoDB for structural validation. Um, and it's used by Mozilla for Firefox telemetry data, of which there is quite a lot, I understand. And um, for some of the data in the Mozilla developer network um, site, which many of you will be familiar with um, if you work with web and API technologies. Um, and rather soon, OpenAPI 3.1, as you've just been hearing, will fully support JSON schema for payload validation, which is really quite exciting. Excuse me. Um, so as, as I'm talking about some of the um, more complex elements of JSON schema today, um, it's good to refresh uh, my mind, at least on some of the terminology and basic concepts um, especially to make sure I don't get confused. Um, but before that, I do have a little announcement. JSON Schema Draft 2020 is released. It was released a few days ago rather silently. And the, the, the good news is you can start playing with this today. Um, it's been a huge team effort. Um, so many thanks to all of the contributors as well. If you want to after this talk, have a look at the Hyperjump implementation, which has 2012 support. Fundamentals and key technology. This schema is essentially used for validation, but also for use by um, the, for helping you to understand the instance and for use by other parts of your application. It has extensibility through the use of additional vocabularies. It can be used to generate um, user interfaces, but that's uh, not part of the spec. It's also baked into Visual Studio Code, which is really helpful for just writing schemas. It's key to understand that some locations in a JSON schema can also be a schema themselves. This is called a, a subschema and they are fully-fledged JSON schemas in their own right. An instance, is the, an instance is the JSON to which you want to apply the schema, uh, the instance you want to validate or find annotations for. A meta schema is a JSON schema, which describes a JSON schema 
aptly named a meta schema. Um, the spec document is always the single source of truth and the meta schemas are provided as a convenience. So occasionally we find issues with them and fix them. JSON schema works in JSON land and we have validation keywords for different types supported by JSON. In draft 202012, there is also support for advanced use cases beyond instances which are only encoded in JSON, such as binary data or multi-part forms, uh, which is uh, very essential for um, APIs. Applicability is a key term. Every starts by everything starts in JSON schema by applying the schema itself to the instance. Different keywords can apply sub schemas to different parts of the instance. And the keywords in those schemas provide assertions or annotations as a result. Assertions are about validity, a yes or no answer. Annotations provide additional metadata about the instance for use by applications, um, some of which are used to determine the behavior of other keywords. And structural keywords and schema reuse make it easier to author complex multi-file schemas or indeed sets of schemas. We talk about references in terms of URIs and URI resolution processes are used when resolving a reference. $ID identifies a schema resource using an absolute URI and $F can be used to reference various locations, but more on that later. Dynamic anchors allow for an anchor to work across schema resources. This is useful for creating meta schemas for new dialects and vocabularies as it helps avoid a lot of duplication. So let's talk about dialects and vocabularies. Dialects and vocabularies are all to do with the extensibility of JSON schema. To help us understand what these terms mean from JSON schema, let's take a look at a section of the 2019-09 meta schema. The keys of the dollar vocabulary keyword are URIs which identify the vocabulary. This is similar to dollar ID and dollar schema in that it's not necessarily um, a, a network addressable URI and it's only used as an identifier. It may be that there's some human readable documentation associated with the vocabulary at the end of that URI if you put it into a browser, but there may be some data determined utility. The values of the vocabulary's object are billions. For 2019-09, support for the format vocabulary is not actually required, hence the value here is false. However, for the purposes of validating a schema, the requirement of format key must be a string, so the meta schema for format vocabulary is still being referenced. The value of vocabulary tells the processing implementation which vocabularies they need to understand to process the instance to the author's expectations. For other meta schemas, this may include purposes beyond validation, such as the creation of forms or code generation with additional semantics. We tried to fix formats uh, for in um, draft 2020-12 for varying definitions of fixed, but at least we've made a format more predictable. Um, and I'll go over some of that later. The standard dialect is the JSON schema core and validation specifications constructed uh, by several different vocabularies. The vocabulary keyword in JSON schema provides a standardized method to define required and optional support in implementations via the meta schema. Being able to extend meta schemas is a common use case, but it's not super easy, as some of you might be aware. It's important to note that the vocabularies keyword is only for use in meta schemas, with dollar schema and JSON schema identifying which dialect via the associated meta schema is required. Most of you probably won't use the vocabularies keyword unless you're writing new meta schemas. So let's take a look at what's changed for $F in 2019 and up. This isn't so important for peer validation, but it is important for output of validation intended to be used by other tools, or tools which want to generate forms or other documents as a result of processing. Prior to 2019-09, uh, 
a dollar f would result in other keywords in the same schema object being ignored or replaced if they already existed. Dollar f now plays nice with other keywords and doesn't just replace the whole object. Dollar f is now classified as an applicator keyword that applies the reference schema, much like other applicators. Don't forget, you still shouldn't define duplicate keys, such as dollar f in the same object. That's not JSON schema, that's just JSON. So let's take a look at annotation collection, which is optional, uh, as it may be um, costly in terms of performance. Our community often asks us how they can get more detailed error information from implementations. MongoDB, for example, just reports an error or not. Uh, sadly, there's not much we can do about that. But what we have done is to find several layers of standardized output formats. Only flag is actually required, but we hope most implementations will provide at least the basic level of support for output. Some implementations are already providing detailed output, and that's really great to see. So let's take a look at what's new for draft 202012. As I mentioned earlier, we only published this um, a few days ago, uh, which was supposed to be 202011, uh, but we had a few things we needed to fix. While the specification documents are published, we still have some work to do. However, we've had a lot of implementation implementer involvement this year, so you can use draft 202012 today. It may be a little rough around the edges and it may need some more tests, but you're not going to need to wait another year to try out this new schema. Let's briefly look at some of the more important changes in 2020-12. Let's start with compound documents. Reference resolution has always been tricky to understand in JSON schema which uh, with the use of dollar ID and subschemas affecting how references are resolved. So to make this simpler, we broke up the current usage of dollar ID into two keywords. This is specifically relevant to schema bundling, or as we now call them, compound schema documents. Draft 2020-12 defines schema bundling, which is a common use case. A dollar ID identifies the root of a schema resource, allowing identification of a compound document by that virtue. Compound documents cannot be validated by applying meta schemas acting as an instance. This is a result of allowing cross version or cross dialect referencing, but we won't go into details on that today. We don't see plain name fragments used in practice very often, uh, so we won't go over this in detail. Embedding or including technical, uh, embedding or including or the technical term transclusion of one schema within another is something people ask for often. Plain name fragments are for non-location specific identifiers. Previously, when using dollar ID, the intent could be unclear and many possible non-canonical URIs could result. There's a great appendix section in the specification about that which demonstrates it rather well. Now, $ID could not be a plain name fragment, and you must use $anchor instead. Remember, the terminology here flows from the URI specification, which has its own RFC. So $anchor is for plain name fragments now. It's not used very often, but it's helpful for schemas which are likely to be embedded in other resources. Let's take a look at how items and prefix items has changed. We tried to make this a bit easier to use. We've redefined how you apply subschemas to arrays as a reaction to common questions and problems. Keywords which have dual uses are sometimes confusing, so we split up items it, the items keyword in a way which makes much more sense. The items keyword now only takes a single schema, which is applied to all items in the array after the index of the annotation from prefix items. Prefix items now takes the tuple form of items from 2019-09 and before, 
and the additional items keyword is no longer defined. This change isn't necessarily the obvious choice, but it does allow you to have the same constraints with less potentials to get it wrong. The format keywords finally has predictable behavior. Let's take a quick look at that. Previously in draft 2019-09, the format keyword kind of maybe sort of did some validation, but it was, it was totally uh, implementation dependent. Now for 2020-12, the format keyword does not do validation, but provides annotation. Let's dig into that a little bit more. Accessing annotations is now standardized, so applications can still perform validation using the resulting annotations from format keyword, if they like. Splitting format into two vocabularies means if an implementation wants to support semantic validation using the format keyword, then they can. But the behavior has to be turned on, if you like, by the use of a different dialect, which requires the format keyword as an assertion, uh, the, sorry, requires the format assertion vocabulary. This is an advanced feature which we expect most people won't use, but it's still an option if this is something you need. So where do you go from here if you want to get started with JSON schema or you need some help? If you'd like to understand some of the basics, um, check out our learning resources on json-schema.org forward slash learn and understanding JSON schema. Uh, while these are not necessarily up to date with the latest draft, they provide you with a great foundation in terms of understanding JSON schema and making the basic schemas that you'll probably need. If you'd like to play with JSON schema live, uh, jsonschema.dev is a great draft seven version um, playground for you to test JSON schema and uh, your instances in terms of validation. The JSON schema team and community monitor the JSON schema tag on Stack Overflow. So any questions you ask there will be picked up by someone, you can be assured. If you want even further help or your, your question doesn't fit on the Stack Overflow site, you can join our active and friendly Slack server via json-schema.org. So uh, thank you to all the previous and current teams involved in making JSON Schema happen. Thank you for the, the contributors and the community and the implementation developers as well. So we've looked at what JSON Schema is. We have reviewed some of the core terminology. We've talked about dialects and vocabularies from 2019-09, and we've looked at the newest changes from 2020. I thank you all for listening, and thank you to our sponsors via our Open Collective, Retool, Stoplight, and Async API Initiative. I'll now be here to take some questions, and thank you for having me here at API Data Paris. Thank you very much, Ben. Indeed, we have a few minutes, seven minutes to be precise, uh, for questions. Um, while people are, are typing their questions, I may ask one first. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, JSON schema is powered by the community? Uh, are you looking for specific uh, specific uh, skills? To, uh, for to make JSON schema advance, or are you okay? You have enough people working on your. Um, I, I'm I'm doing that for coding people <laughs> to give you a hand. Yeah, I mean, um, we're always looking for people to review the spec and um, help update the test suite. Um, the test suite for 2020 is is underway, but there's still work to be done. Um, I think one of the things we will be. Uh, looking to do in the near future is is replace their current website. Um, so again, there's going to be a need to collate all of the documentation we have and you know present that in a way that makes sense. Um, we need to do a bit of thinking in terms of how we organize the content we have and um, how we provide that to enable people to look back at previous drafts. Currently, that's not really very easy. So I don't know if it's a thing in the open source world to have a web page telling, okay, we are looking for 
these kind of people to do this sort of thing. Uh, a question from Lorna Mitchell, mm -hmm. uh, who just spoke about the Open API specification. Can you name drop the tools or implementations that are most ready for the new JSON schema version? Um, I am I'm only aware of one, and that is uh, Hyperjump, um, which is a JavaScript implementation. Um, the, the guy behind that has been um, working with us to uh, finalize the 2020 draft. Um, I know AG, AJV, which is uh, one of the most well-known implementations in JavaScript, is working on the 2019-09 support. I think that went live fairly recently in the last few months. Um, I don't know how much effort it will be for him to, to migrate to 2012. Um, but there, there are other implementations coming as well. And so do check out the, the website. Uh, we keep a list of implementations and their draft support that they uh, uh, report. Yeah. Do you, do you have an idea about the time uh, that separates the release of a new version <laughs> and the major tools being updated? Um, yeah, I guess I guess it depends because um, there's there's a couple of uh, foundation libraries which are um, really close. Um, obviously, we have one today already, which is you know two days after is is uh, pretty unheard of for us. Um, in terms of of other tooling such as, as documentation and validation, um, uh, as, as documentation and form generation. Sorry. Um, they, they may take a little while longer to see those as they're generally new implementations rather than updates. Um, I only know of a few that have kept up to date with drafts. Most of them have sort of stuck at draft four. Um, and in terms of um, open API tooling, I have absolutely no idea um, beyond, beyond validation. In terms of validation, um, they should be able to drop in an implementation of JSON schema and have that work with a few modifications. Um, in terms of you know documentation generation and code generation, I, I really don't know. Is there a kind of a, a way to know if the tool I'm using is actually supporting the latest version, or at least just to know which version of JSON schema uh, the tool I use uh, is supporting? Uh, do you know about that, something? Um, so yeah, we, we have the list of, of tools on our, our site and there's okay. draft support. Uh, there's the official test suite, so generally I tend to check to see if they are using that test suite and um, what sort of compatibility they report or the results of that test suite. Okay, thank you. Uh, just checking a new question. No, it's not a question, it's, a, it's just a comment. Um, so maybe a question about you and JSON schema. How did you how did you come to work on JSON schema? <laughs> um, were you dreaming of that when you were a kid or <laughs> um about five or five and a half years ago um during my day job we were looking to um specify any federated searching or discovery API for genetic data and um I was looking for for standards to document the structure of the, the data and there are, there are a few different options, and I was considering, you know, RAML was the uh, close contender, uh, but none of them really did what I wanted, um, and JSON Schema was the closest. Um, so I was kind of going, you know, who's who's working on JSON Schema? Who's who's developing this? Is anyone doing anything? And um, it turned out that the only person who had admin rights on the repository um, disappeared off the face of the earth, um, and. Uh, a few of us sort of picked it up, and fortunately, one person still had commit rights on the old repository to set up redirects and stuff like that. Um, so we kind of just showed up and tried to get on with it and um, gradually worked out how to, to manage different aspects like the website and um, setting up new community uh, points of contact. Um, and we just showed up and did the work, and it kind of evolved from there. So. You know, if you want to contribute to JSON Schema or you have ideas, then just just show up in our Slack and have a look at issues and just do some work. Um, yeah. Okay, so basically, once you start to use JSON Schema, you contribute to it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, thank you. Really a pleasure to have you. And 
we are looking forward to more and more tools supporting the latest version of JSON schema and mm -hmm. especially the open API specific yeah. tools, which will obviously need to support it. And, uh,